Today is reno day. Today you're going to be grooming this area, getting out a corer machine and putting some solid tines into this green as well to help with some aeration, giving the green a heavy top dress as well and then giving it some fertilizer. So we're going to rejuvenate this green, get rid of some thatch and set it up for the winter and for next season as well. Yo mate, what up? Welcome to another lawn tip vid. So doing our first reno on this golf green here today, this 12 months old, probably doesn't desperately need a renovation, but it does need a couple of things fixed in it. So the first thing is we're gonna try and get rid of some of the sponginess in this lawn. So it's a little bit thatchy. This bent grass does tend to get quite tight and quite thatchy and I fell behind on the mowing this year as I've talked to you guys about. So the area is spongy. So we're gonna groom this area today with my groomer. We can use the scarifier and what that is going to do is pull out the below ground thatch and some of the above ground thatch. So the dead organic material is your thatch is what makes your area spongy. Not bad to have a little bit of thatch but when you start getting to a point where it's getting spongy and it doesn't feel that great underfoot, it's gonna cause issues with nutrients getting down to your root system and also water getting past that thatch layer and getting down to your root system. So that's why we don't want too much thatch in the lawn. We want a little bit to hold some nutrients. We also don't want too much that it's gonna cause problems in the long run. Aeration will help with this as well. So we are gonna aerate the green as well today. And the main reason I wanna aerate it is to help firm the surface up a bit. And we'll do that with some sand as well. But we're going to use this groomer just here. So this is my Protea and it's got a grooming reel in it currently, as you can see right here. So fine blades, and we're just gonna pull out some of that spongy thickness in there. Now, I'm not gonna be too aggressive because I've been doing this once a month at the moment. I'm not gonna pull too much out. We're gonna try and get more done with this with our aeration and a bit of a heavier top dress than we have been. But this will just help relieve some of that squishy squishiness in there. So if you are doing this at home, you can hire out a scarifier. If you can't get your hands on one, I'd highly recommend you at least scalp your lawn. As you can imagine, it's gonna be pretty hard to scalp a green that's been cut at three and a half, four millimeters. So we're gonna use this today to get all the thatch out. But you can scalp it, and that's gonna help you get rid of all that above ground thatch. Don't be scared with Kaikyu and Cooch to go, and even Zoysia, to get a little bit closer to dirt. Buffalo, you tend to want to stay not, you don't want to go too much below 15 mil or you're going to start causing problems because you've got all your above ground runners, that's its root system. So you don't want to be pulling that out and then killing your lawn off. But you can definitely scalp, you don't have to scarify or groom, but if you can get your hands on one, really handy tool and it doesn't make a huge mess of the area either. But let's do this now, we're going to go in two directions on this green and I don't expect to get a ton out because we've been doing this pretty regularly but I still want to do this before we get some holes in it and before we get some sand out as well. So it doesn't look like we've done much to green as you can see from the close-ups, but look how much material has come out from underneath that top layer. Some of that sand to soil, a lot of it's the above ground um, thatch itself and sponginess. Bent grass tends to get a bit more like that because of the above ground runners. So your stolons, um, it does get quite thatchy in the top and a little bit puffy as well. If one, you don't keep up with the mowing like I didn't. Um, and that's, that's basically the only reason it is like that. Or if you have a fertilizer, but I have not been going too crazy with the fertilizer this season. Mostly liquids, some granular if it's needed it. Um, but yeah, it's just nuts how it pulls that much out. I gave this a double cut before as well, by the way, about an hour before I did this groom, and you can see how much has come off this. Like, that is nuts, and that's just what it's pulling out. It does feel a lot better underfoot. Now, what's gonna help it feel even better underfoot and help this area breathe is going to be core aeration. 
So what I'm showing here today, I forgot to mention, this can be done on a home lawn, especially a cool season lawn. This time of year is perfect. This is when I would always do a cool season grass, grass renovation. So ryegrass, Kentucky bluegrass, your fescues, like your tall fescue, your fine fescues, your bent grass as well. Any of those cool season grasses, best time to do it because this is the most active time of growth. Spring, the reason I don't recommend people doing it is because our summer weeds start coming up, like our summer grass, like our past palum and you generally like to get an overseed down when you're doing a renovation like this. Obviously the green doesn't need it because it's so aggressive and it creeps sideways. But when it comes to doing the ryegrass, which I'm doing next week, doing a similar process, but slightly different because I'll probably do a little bit of a scalp on that area because it's a bit taller grass and I probably won't scarify it because it's a bunch type grass. But ones that have like Kentucky bluegrass and bent grass that have those underground runners and above ground runners, sorry. Um, definitely a good idea to get rid of that mat and that thatch as well. But same process as you do on a home lawn, what we're doing here today. It's just at a larger scale. Something that golf courses do more often, so they do it twice a year, but they don't oversee it obviously. They do it twice a year because you've got so much traffic from golfers. Obviously I've got the, the nice thing that I don't have a lot of traffic here. So this is very easy to make it look nice compared to an actual golf course because I don't have all the traffic and I can spend a lot more time on this area as well because it's one sole dedicated green to one person instead of 18 holes to a certain amount of staff members with lots of fairways, tees and everything else. But same process, just looks a little bit different because it's shorter. So the next thing we will do today is some core aeration. So we're gonna core aerate this area. So since this green is only 12 months old, I'm actually going to do a solid tine of this area. Instead of using hollow tines, that's gonna pull a core out of the ground. We're just gonna do solid tines. Because it's so fresh, technically it doesn't even really need some aeration today, but since we're going all out, and I'll show you guys the process, we're gonna just do a solid tine today. So we're doing 12 mil solid tines, I think I bought. It might've been 10 mil solid tines. Pretty closely spaced though, so we can get quite a bit of sand down in this area, or not super closely spaced, but enough that we can get quite a bit of sand in here as well. Now the reason core aeration is such an important step for your lawn is one, it helps relieve compaction. So over the summertime, your lawn can firm up quite a bit, especially clay soils, and you'll find that aeration is a huge help in relieving that compaction, which allows your roots to actually penetrate a little bit deeper, allows water to be taken up through those new areas a little bit easier as well, and also helps your nutrients get down and your water to that area down there. So we're gonna to top dress with some sand afterwards, so it also helps with a little bit with drainage. It's fine for you to do this as well with a clay lawn, any soil type, feel free to put some sand down as well to improve drainage. It's not gonna cause problems for you in the long run as long as you get the proper sand, which we'll talk about further on in the video. But let's get the machine out and let's make a start on this coring. So coring is all done. So we used a pro core from the golf course. Massive shout out to Schultz for letting me borrow that and Taylor, my little brother, for coming out and actually doing it for me. I didn't want to risk breaking the machine. <laughs> but we just did a solid time. So we only did a solid time this time around so that we're not pulling up too much of the surface. The green's only 12 months old, so we didn't need to pull out a full core. And it's not a bad idea with cool season grass to go a solid time. In the autumn time, generally at golf courses will do a hollow tine in the spring and a solid tine in the autumn. Not everyone does that. That's just what a lot of the guys around here tend to do because you get a bit of quicker repair when you do a solid tine like this. I could honestly leave this because they were quite thin tines and they would close over themselves. We want to get some sand down in there to help with drainage and to also help nutrients get in there and help actually firm this surface up a little bit as well because it's a little bit soft underfoot 
so I want to firm this up a bit. But biggest reason for core aeration is to relieve compaction, as I've said earlier, and make it just look, well, it revitalizes your lawn because you start getting oxygen down to the roots and it really helps it grow and just perform really well. Now today is top dressing day. So I've taken the dew off this morning with the broom just because it was quite dewy. So today we're gonna to be putting out sand to fill those holes in and get a little bit of a top dress on the top as well. Um, I might go a little bit heavier down on this left edge here. There is one spot with the machine yesterday that unfortunately dug in a bit and pulled a little bit of turf out just because it's a, it's a weird angle there. Um, when I designed it, I sort of dropped off the edge a little bit too quickly. As you can see there, so it just peters off quite quick, which was the design so it could run into the dam, but now there's long grass there, but yeah, you can see it just sort of tore it out a little bit. That's fine, that will come back. And it's also torn it out a little bit, well, quite a bit, just here. So a little bit more sand there to help with that, but that will honestly come back in a week or two. I'd say two weeks, because it's prime growing season at the moment. as you can see top dressing is all done big sand pit just here went nice and thick still a bit of pebbling here which as I said I'll have to pick up later with the brush not ideal but you gotta do what you gotta do but you can see that that is filling in all of those holes super nicely can't even see them now once we've done that which is what you're aiming for basically when we're doing something like this so now that's that thick, it's time to get this in. Now normally I use the lawn level on this, but I thought, you know what? I've got a mat that I use hitting golf balls off, which would be perfect for a drag mat to rub this sand in. So I've done the most dodgy job of making up something to go on the back of the mower. But this thing will help just rub the sand down in there nicely and save me a ton of back breaking work because generally on the green, because it's 500 square meters, it, take, it usually takes me about two to two and a half hours to do this, so I thought, why not get the drag man out, use it, I haven't been playing much golf anyway, <laughs> and drag that across the green. So let's give it a go. I wanna see how this works. was an absolute joy to use. It normally takes me like, as I said, two and a half hours, half an hour. Took me to do that, felt like it was longer because I was going around for so long, but it rubbed it in so well. Ignore the rocks, I'm gonna get rid of them, probably gonna go get the mower charged up in a minute and come and get the brush down and pick all that up because that is just ridiculous. But look at that, you cannot hardly even see the core holes anymore, like that is crazy. Yeah, won't be long to this, getting a cut. If all this, um, all this stone was off here, I'd be cutting it in a day or two. So I may try and get the brush out now. I don't think the swarman's charged though, so I need to charge it. It's definitely not charged, I haven't used it since I'm old here. So <laughs> anyway, it's done a really good job, that drag mat. I am gonna be using that from now on. I don't think it's gonna be a golf hitting any mat anymore, which is not a problem. We've got enough space here to hit without using a mat, so. Bro, I'll obviously tidy that up, make it a little bit of a better job up the top there, but just a quick last minute thought. I had, while I was actually top dressing the green, that I could use my old golf mat, and that's so good, I love it. Right, so I thought I had one for the Swarman, but obviously I don't, but I have one for the Protea, so I just went and installed it. it takes a little bit longer than the Swarman, probably took me oh, 15 minutes to put that in there. So this should help just pick up some stones and rocks and other things as well on the green because it is not ideal. It even looks worse now that it's sort of dried out a bit. So much stone in that, man. 
That is just wrong. It's ridiculous. So the camera went flat while I was doing that grooming. <laughs> so it's been nearly a week since that video was shot. So I've had close to seven days of repair on this area. As you can see, it's still coming back, still growing through the top dress. Still a little bit of sand about. I haven't fertilized the green yet because I wanted to see how it responded without some fertilizer. Because I'm trying to keep thatch levels down, as I said, and try not to cause too much growth on this area. I probably need to give it a liquid fur, to be honest. Probably today or tomorrow. But the green has nearly grown through. That brush really did work to get the stones up. There's still a few about, but it's so much better than it was. There's only like a little couple of bits here and there, but man, the green feels so much firmer now underfoot, which is what the main goal was in the end, to be honest really was the goal in the end. Haven't really had much growth through this really, really thick stuff just here. Oh no, hold up. We have. There's all new growth coming through there. Have to remove some of the stones there, but there is growth coming through in these areas. They got absolutely smashed. Some coming through here as well, which is nice. That'll be repaired pretty soon, let's be honest. But the green, it's probably in need of a cut and a fur. So that'll be, what I'll be doing tomorrow or the day after, but six days after reno, it's what you come to expect. And I mean, I went, that brush did actually do a little bit of a groom as well, which I didn't tell you guys, but when I did it, it actually dig down. Did dig into the surface a bit and actually thinned it out. As you can see, some of it's still recovering from how it thinned it out, and it's bruised the canopy just a little bit, but it's coming back nicely just need some fur and that's about it but it just feels so much better underfoot and we're set this up for the whole of winter leading into the springtime as well so I'm excited in about a week's time this should be looking like hardly anything was done to it anyway thanks guys so much for watching really really appreciate it hope you guys enjoyed the video and you learned something from this remember perfect time for cool season grass to do this to your lawn this time of year if you're looking at doing the warm season grass only do core aeration. I wouldn't be going nuts on top dressing, scarifying, anything like that. But you can definitely core aerate. But anyway, thanks guys for watching. Appreciate you and I'll see you very soon.